Hey guys, this is Kilo, and this morning I was messaged by one of our subscribers asking me if I could do a video about pricing. How I come up with my pricing, what's a fair price, general questions of that nature. And this video is for them and anyone with this question. It's really hard to answer this as there's no real one size fits all. So. I also apologize because this isn't the normal format you're used to seeing my videos in. It's like 110 degrees outside and I'm in my dining room now because this is like the coolest room in the house. So apologies for a different background. We're sitting at my dining room table. But back to this, I put together these cue cards here to kind of give you guys a guide. So this is going to be a lot of examples, it's not going to be a real life you know, number because your guys' budgets are all going to be different depending if you have a large family, if you're a single guy, if you, you know, live in a studio apartment versus a massive four bedroom house, you know, it just depends. So think of this as a guide to help you guys come up with your own pricing. So first of all, what you'll need to do is grab a pen and paper and write down personal budget. From here, underneath that, put a little line like I did here, write down your rent or your mortgage payment for the month and, you know, jot this down. Come up with, you know, your monthly utilities. To do this one, I definitely recommend going back six months and then taking the average and writing down that number. Uh, down here, I wrote estimate high on most of these because you want to allow yourself some leeway. So if one month you pay 200, but normally you're paying 150, 160, go ahead and just round up and just say, you know, 200 bucks in utilities. Food, uh, come up with your food budget for the month. Um, again, this is up to you guys because if you're a single guy, you're not gonna be spending as much on food per month as a family, you know, with four children. So. You know come up with that maybe you have pets add that you know their budget for their food and then down here miscellaneous i wrote this is going to be everything else you know your car payment your insurance your cell phones um if you have cable maybe you play xbox xbox live netflix maybe you have you know apps on your phone that you pay reoccurring payments on whatever it is write it down and don't rush this um, process Take as long as you need to come up with every single one of your bills. Sometimes you might write this down and you know you might wanna to get to it and figure out your pricing right away. And then you might miss some things. You might say, oh, I forgot, You know, maybe I have a car wash membership that I pay $30 a month for that I forgot to write down. Maybe I forgot about you know this subscription and that subscription and all of a sudden you forgot to write down 100 or $200 in bills you have. And you don't wanna mess anything up. You wanna get everything down to the cent to be as successful as you can. So once you get your personal budget all written down and you get you know whatever number comes of that, next to it, you know, draw a line down you know, next to personal and write business budget and then draw a line and then write down you know, your inventory, the cost of your insurance, your shop fees, if you're gonna have a shop, if you're gonna be mobile, you won't really have this. Um, gas for your vehicles, depending if you only have one, maybe you have employees, you know, make sure you estimate exactly how much gas they're all going to be using. Tools, you know, how like, maybe, you know, always factor in a decent amount for tools. You might break a drill bit, you might run out of drill bits, you might, you know, break some lock picks, you might, someone could steal your tools on a job, you know, like you always want to, you know, provide yourself a safety net. So put that in your business budget, like budget out a certain amount for things that are just out of your control. Maybe, you know, in the beginning, you might come across a job you've never done before. I've seen it where guys have been locksmiths for a while and then they cut, uh, you know, they're installing a new lock and they cut the hole in the wrong spot. That's a very expensive fix. Um, they don't always want to go through their insurance. They want to try and fix it themselves, maybe a goof ring or something. You always want to, you know, budget and think of the worst possible thing. Add that into your budget. 
just to save you guys for me i'm always planning three steps ahead that's how i feel like you have to you know be to be successful if you're going to have employees write down you know the cost of them if you're going to lease or finance your vehicles write down your payments for it your insurance for them i put these dots here because this list can go on forever like i was just started to kind of ramble there on different situations that can come up um, there's a lot more depending on again if you're going to have a shop maybe you're going to have you know cleaning people come in and clean the windows vacuum the floors maybe you'll have your employees do it maybe you're solo and you're going to be bogged down so much you won't always have time to wipe down your windows and clean your shop over and over and over so maybe you're going to have to hire people think about all of these things like i said don't rush these lists come up with them as you as you do like take a break after you write down like 10 of these you know do something completely different from focusing on this come back and it'll just kind of naturally come to you again i wrote estimate high because all of these can fluctuate your gas you know like if you think oh you know i only spent 50 bucks a week you know maybe your other employee has a you know heavy foot and he's spending 150 a week maybe you know you're going up and down a mountain i live in a mountain town so going up and down the hill costs more in gas to do so again go ahead and estimate on the high end of all of this it'll allow you a lot of leeway in the end so you want to come up with both of these lists at your own pace once you do you will come up with a number for both of these you'll take both of those numbers and add them together and in this example i wrote down that you know in my situation we'll just pretend this is me my personal budget is one thousand dollars per month and my business budget is one thousand dollars per month i wrote it like this to make the numbers really simple for us all to follow along and understand so your numbers will obviously be a lot different again just to make this really easy so we add those two numbers together and you know a thousand a thousand our total budget now this is our target amount for the month is going to be two thousand dollars per month that we need to make just to break even so you'll take your break even pay or your profit of two thousand dollars and you'll divide this by four weeks this will come up to five hundred dollars per week that you have to make to break even for the month or that breaks down to $100 per day. And in this example, we're just basing this off of a five day work week, Monday through Friday. If you wanna work seven days a week, 24 hours, it's up to you. This example is five days, Monday through Friday, and that's where we're at. So from there, you now have your break even, you know, target of $2,000. And now you have to come up with what you want to make profit. What do you want to make doing this, this job? What are you comfortable making? In this example, I just wrote down $8,000 per month. That's what we wanna make for ourselves. So if I wanna make $8,000, just to put in my pocket, I've gotta make 2,000 first to break even on all of my expenses. This means that my target for the month, every month, is going to be $10,000, you know, no less. I will not accept any less than making $10,000 to, to meet my target and break even. You always want to strive to hit your target. You never want to, you know, say, oh, you know, maybe this month I'll just make $7,000. Like, whatever this number is, you have to hit this. Like, get it in your mind to be, and I want you guys to be very successful going into this. You have to have the mindset that you will make this amount every month for yourself, this amount to break even, and you will not, you know, settle for less. Some months might, might be very slow. You know, if you live in a colder state where, you know, winters are rough or, you know, maybe you're in a town where it's more of a tourist town where they only come in uh, you know for a season and then they go back to you know wherever they're from i've worked in cities like that where they have like country clubs where part of the season just dies down there's really nobody in town um 
again, you just want to, whatever number you write down, this is the number that you have to have in your mind that you have to hit both of these. So we're gonna say that we wanna make $10,000 per month. You'll then take that number of $10,000 of our target profit, divide that by four weeks, and you break it down to $2,500 per week that you have to make in order to succeed in hitting your target of 10,000. You divide 2,500 per week by five days, Monday through Friday, and now we know that we have to make $500 per day. This covers our break even and our own personal profit. So $500 per day is your new target. Makes it a lot easier to focus on this than a big $10,000 number. So you will take your $500 per day that you know you have to make, and you will divide this by a normal employee's eight hour shift. Even though you're about to own your own business and you're going in this for yourself, always look at this from an employee's normal shift. That's how you wanna see this. So 500 divided by eight hours comes up to $62.50 per hour. That's what you wanna make in order to you know, hit your target of $500 a day. So we're going to say, you know, your normal operating hours are nine to five, right? Giving yourself, you know, a lunch break. If you really want to just work straight through your lunch, we'll say nine to four, right? Or however you want to do it. And whatever you want to work, you've got to just make sixty-two fifty an hour for eight hours to come up with this target. Um, $500 a day. From here, you will convert this into a service charge, or I wrote down trip charge. So you're not really going to give people an hourly rate most of the time. Customers like flat rate fees, you will learn this. You don't really want, like commercial, you're going to give hourly, but all other calls, you know, automotive and residential, they all really want to hear flat rates. So, or an estimate that's close to a flat rate. So you want to round up, you know, the 6250 to something really easy for them to understand. You'll say $65 is my trip charge. Or you can say, you can round down and say $60, you know, whatever you want. In this case, I round up, I always round up. And we're gonna, that way when they call, you know, they're not like, oh, 6250 plus, you know, this key, maybe I want three keys. Then they start like the, the math starts to kind of mess with the customer and it kind of breaks them away from the conversation you're you're trying to have with them and the sale you're trying to make. So customers like whole numbers. They don't like change. So I've also wrote uh, to go back to the trip charge. This is very important. I wrote it down this way because I want you guys to get in the habit of saying trip charge or trip fee. Reason for this is you will learn this a customer will call you. They'll say, like, let's say they're, they lock themselves out at, you know, Starbucks and they're locked out of their car. They call you up and you're like, yeah, you know, I'm $65 to come out and unlock your car. They're like, okay, how long? You're like, well, I'm 20 minutes from that location. They're like, okay, cool. They hang up with you. They're like, well, 20 minutes. Let's see if the tow truck guy is a little closer. They call him and he's like, yeah, you know, I'm 15 minutes away. So they call him and they're, now they're gonna play a game where they just wait to see who shows up first. If you say my service charge is $65 and you show up and you watch the tow truck guy you know, finish up his job and you walk up and the customer's like, oh, he already got it. You're like, well, it's $65. Like you called and they're like, well, you didn't perform a service. You want to get in the habit of saying trip charge and letting them know, like, even if I show up and you punch out your window and break your own window to get in your car, you owe me $65 for my trip. Like, I don't just leave my shop or leave my house for free. Like, I, I, no, that's not what's happening. Now, a lot of times if the tow truck driver unlocks their car, gives them the key, they're just gonna hop in their car and dip out. Like, that's just how it's gonna be. They're just gonna take off. But it does give you the upper hand in the situation where, you know, maybe the tow truck driver has your back and you, you know, you're like, hey, this is, you know, theft of services here. Like you, like you can really tell them that. You can say like, you can't do that. The same like if you order pizza, you can't order 
three different companies pizza and say whoever gets here first is the one I'm paying you ordered that service like you're gonna pay so always you know refer to it as a trip charge round up to whatever it comes up to hourly for you know whatever number you know per day comes up you divide it by eight hours always round it up to the nearest whole number so we're gonna say now my service charge in this situation is $65. Or my trip charge, sorry. I've been saying service charge for a second. <laughs> so now let's say as a new locksmith, you're in an area where you're averaging five calls per day. That's what you can handle per day starting out. So at $65, a trip charge plus five customers a day your profit off of that per day is going to be $325. So just in trip charges and trip fees, you're making $325 every day if you're getting five customers, you know, you're heading to five jobs. So to give you an example here, let's say caller number one calls you up first thing in the morning. He's like, hey, you know, I went out to get the paper. I didn't realize, I don't know how my, my doorknob just locked itself. I'm locked out of my house. I need a locksmith. You say, okay, uh, my trip charge to come out is $65, and to pick the lock, it's going to be $25. Now, this one is really up to you. Some locksmiths, a lot of locksmiths in metro areas will just charge a flat rate to come out. Now, it changes if, let's say, they're on vacation and they come back and they just lost their key and you've now got to pick four locks because they have a security door. Then you're going to say, okay, you know what? It's $25 extra for that security door I got to pick. And then if it's, you know, a crazy lock or a smart lock or whatever it is, you're going to change this situation. I'm just trying to simplify it. He agrees. You head out there, you make $90 for your first call of the day. Our next caller, caller number two, he calls you and he says, hey, you know, I want to rekey my house. Uh, you know, we just had a, a roommate move out, bad situation, whatever it was, doesn't matter. Um, you tell him, okay, you know, it's uh, $65 for my trip charge to come out and $10 per cylinder. I wrote it down as per cylinder because you don't want to say per lock. Customers with double-sided deadbolts and doorknobs think that that counts as one lock. You kind of have to explain to them, like anywhere that the key pretty much slides into, any any keyway, like you want to just let them know it's, it's per keyway, just to kind of let them know up front. Because sometimes, you know, customers a lot of times think that a double-sided deadbolt is, you know, only, it's like the same pins, but on either side, they think it's just one lock. They think you just rekey one side and it, it works from either side. In their head, that's how it works. So always let them know per cylinder or per keyway. And on average, when you call a locksmith, they're going to quote you between $8 and $15 per cylinder. We're going to go with 10 to simplify the math here. I've seen locksmiths charge as much as $18 per cylinder, which is crazy to me, but that's their price. So he's going to say, okay, you know, I got eight locks and so times 10, so 80. So 80 plus 65, they agree. You make $145 off of your second customer for the day. Your third customer he calls you up. He says, hey, you know, I just went to Home Depot, picked up a door, framed it in myself. I don't know how to install my deadbolt. I just want one deadbolt installed and I want it rekeyed to match the rest of the locks on my home. So you're going to say, okay, you know, my trip charge is $65. To drill the hole, we're going to say our price is $25. You can make this whatever price you want to fit the job. Whatever you charge this man or woman, make sure that you save this price and you use this in the future. Because if they refer somebody to you and you charge 45 for their lock, they're gonna say, how come you charge this one, you know, this person 25, like, how is that fair? And it starts to make you look kind of bad business-wise. So whatever price you charge one person, charge that to the next person and this is for normal operating hours. Obviously, after hours, your prices go up. But if they, if both customers call you within business hours, don't charge one forty-five and one twenty-five. So 
you let this customer know, you know, it's uh, $65 for the trip charge to come out, 25 to drill the hole for the lock, and $10 to rekey the lock. You could charge another fee if you want, you know, to, you know, make more money. And you can say, you know, it's also $10 to put it on the door. I don't do that. I, as, you know, personally, as a locksmith, I won't do that to somebody. I'm not going to do that. I do know there are locksmiths in my area that do. So that's why I'm kind of adding that into this example. I had um, a customer tell me one time, you know, the locksmith charged for like every little thing that he did to take off the lock, to rekey the lock, to put the lock back on. It came up to like $250. So just, you know, to, to really build yourself a nice reputation, don't overcharge. You don't want to do that. You will lose callbacks. You will lose references. So in this situation, you know, for this example, the customer agrees and you go install the uh, deadbolt and you make yourself $100 off caller number three. Caller number four, he also wants you to rekey his, his apartment. Let's say he has a front door with a screen door, you know, a security door. So two deadbolts, two doorknobs, uh, single-sided. Let him know, you know, trip charge, 65 bucks. It'll be 40 bucks for four cylinders. You head out there, you make yourself $105. So our next example, caller number five, this is towards the end of your day. He's, you know, he just went in, bought some food at a restaurant, realized when he got back, his key is still on his driver's seat and his door locked on him. He calls you up, you're like, yeah, it's, you know, it's $65 to come out and unlock your car. And, and, you know, this example, unlike the residential lockout, you don't want to say, you know, it's 65 to come out and 25 to open the car. Cars are really simple to open, you know, very few cars are difficult to open but you don't want to say you know it's 65 to come out and 25 to open the car don't do that make sure that you leave this at a set flat rate tow truck companies you know they're out there you got guys on craigslist who just do auto openings uh, you have some guys who kind of moonlight doing it they're all going to have a flat rate tow trucks are you know somewhere around 85 dollars to come out and open your car that's it they don't need a special license or anything, so don't try to, you know, overcharge on that. Give them one flat rate. So in this one, he's like, cool, 65 bucks, you go out there, that's your profit. So to recap, on your day, you made $90 off of color number one, $145 from color number two, 100 from color number three, 105 from color number four, $65 from color number five. Your target for the day was to make $500. You made $505 for today. So you made over, you know, your target. So what you could do is take that five and throw it into, you know, tomorrow's, you know, budget and just kind of get yourself ahead on that. Because you will have days where, you know, maybe you only get three calls. And then, you know, don't worry about those days because you'll have days where you might only get three calls and then the next day you might get 12 calls and then the next day you might get five. One day at our shop, we had 22 calls. It was insane. So, you know, it balances itself out. You're, you know, a lot of times you're gonna go way over your target. Some days you're not even gonna get close. Some days there's just nobody calling. Like, especially through the pandemic, there was days where nobody was calling and it was, it was rough. But at the end of the month, my budget balanced out you know so those are you know this is just an example of how to come up with your pricing now this last card i just wrote up at the very end for those of you asking you know maybe you want to start a 24 7 uh, service the one thing that i will say if you want to be 24 7 or offer after hours no matter what you know if you're advertising on google or however you're advertising always write down your normal operating hours make sure you know if you are nine to five write that down that way if you want to put a 24 7 sticker on your car you know or on your shop window they don't think this is always going to be your price you got to let them know like after hours pricing varies so 
I give you two examples here of what locksmiths tend to do. This example, your normal rate during your nine to five hours, your trip charge is going to be $65. After hours, what a lot of locksmiths will do is just add a one in front of their trip charge. If they charge 65, they'll put 165 as their after hours fee. If they charge 100, they'll add you know 100 to it and say, now I'm $200 to come out. So that is one simple way of doing it. That way you don't have to come up off the top of your head with a bunch of math. Because in this example here that I give, some guys will go you know, 10 to $20 an hour for every hour. Some guys go $50 for every hour after five o'clock. So you, know, you can say, you know, if you call me within nine to five, I'm $65. If you call me at six o'clock, it's gonna be 75 or it's gonna be 85. Call me at seven, it's gonna be 85 or 95. Call me, you know, and so on and so forth. If all of a sudden now it's 11 o'clock at night and you're like, okay, what is, you know, what time is it here? How long has it been? Like, sometimes, you know, you're not looking at the clock, you're just kind of hanging out at home. So just to give you kind of an example, um, you can go with this or you can go with this method and you can make these numbers anything you want. You could be $100 for every hour, whatever, it's up to you. Um, I just wanted to make this video uh, to help anybody out there with these questions. If you guys need more advice or more help, you can leave a comment below or message me directly and I will be glad to help you. That is what this channel is all about. Sorry, um, that's my aquarium next to me. I got a turtle that just decided to deep dive into her tank if you were wondering what that sound was but that's all there is to this video if it helped feel free to leave a like if you want to see more videos like this or you need more help as a locksmith feel free to subscribe this channel is all about you know helping you guys succeed and be you know a better locksmith and understand the job from all aspects of it and it's really a channel to help you guys so any questions you have I will make a video for you guys and I will, you know, if a video doesn't go in depth enough, let me know and I will, you know, have a follow up video to help you. That's what I'm here for. That's what the channel's here for. I appreciate all of you guys subscribing and liking these videos. It really helps us. It helps me get, you know, into a rhythm to help make more and more of these to really help you guys out. So as always, Stay safe out there. I hope you guys, you know, I wish you guys all the success in the world. And I hope that all of you watching have a really nice day.